Senator Jackie Lambie, thanks very much for your time. Let's start, so much to discuss, but let's start with this gambling company. Uh, it's known as Federal Group, and it's hitting up Tasmanian pub owners for the, the rent on their pokies. Can you talk us through what's happening on there? What's the latest advice you've got on that? Uh, well, I haven't got any more advice, but I did hear this morning that um, Federalist Group were going to see the bank. That's after they put letters out and were not very happy with me uh, calling them out with their uh, pants down yesterday because that's exactly what I did. What they've done is disgusting. Some of these pubs are going to be paying 1500 plus a week to rent those poker machines. Yesterday they laid off 1500 people, uh, so that's already hurting Tasmania. They didn't exactly chuck the entitlements at these people. The other thing is, though, is the, um, the people that are involved in this are in the top 200 rich list of Australians. Now, you can't tell me the millions and millions of dollars that they've made out of Tasmanians over the last 40 or 50 years that they can't, when it comes to paying rent on poker machines, uh, remove that and actually take the hit themselves. That's absolute rubbish. They are disgusting. I'd remind these people too... You are up um, in 2024 to see whether or not your licences can be renewed. You have no social conscience, you have shown none, and quite frankly, if I was the Premier and the opposition leader down here in Tasmania, I'd be giving them a warning uh, that they'll be out of the running in the race uh, to leave their poker machines or to have those poker machines in clubs and pubs in the future. I haven't heard anything out of Premier Gutwin and I haven't heard anything out of Rebecca White down here. Your political donation days are over. Now, come out and start going at federal hotels and make sure they're doing the right thing. No more excuses. You, you said that they've shown no social conscience to this point. Is there any sign that you, the pressure from you and the publicans is having some impact? I think that they need to be warned that their licences will be renewed. The legislation will be going through our state parliament uh, as soon as that resumes. Uh, and when that does, it, that could put them at risk. So if I was the Premier, I'd be putting my foot right on their head right now and giving them a very thorough warning that we're not going to put up with this at all. Because the, the future of those pubs, many of them, they'd fall over, wouldn't they, with the weight of that rent and not being able to open their doors? That, that'd that kill a lot of them, wouldn't it? Yeah, so what's happening as of today, um, some of those pubs and clubs are having um, to also um, give, uh, you know, tell their workers that um, their days are numbered at this point in time and what they're also trying to do is at least try and give them some hours. With this hanging over their heads and having to pay this out um, weekly, that is really... Um, that's really, really going to make things more difficult. So the pubs and clubs are trying to do the right things where they can at least give these workers a few hours. And with this now having to pay the rent on the poker machines, uh, that's going to be less and less. So that's the impact that it's having uh, because of um, federal hotels and what they're doing down here in Tasmania. And I just find that absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. It's shameful. Well, as, as you said... It is. It's. It is. It does feel like a, a wartime period, and or if not depression, something of that sort. When you see the numbers of people lining up around the corners of Centrelink around this country as we speak, how how have you reflected on those images when you've seen such? Well, they're, they're tragic, aren't they? So many people have lost their jobs overnight. Uh, yeah, they are tragic. But what's even more tragic? It looks like they're going to have to wait about four weeks before any payments can come through. Um, some of these people um, have been laid off already and haven't received any payments um, from being laid off. That's the other thing. So right now we're going to have the next four weeks in a changeover period and some of these people have got kids. How are they going to feed them? How are they going to pay their rent? Uh, you know, so this is very, very difficult times. Um, I would love it if the government could somehow work a little bit faster, however they're going to do that, and get these payments out the next 14 days, not the next 28 the, the demand on the, the, the Centrelink website has been huge as well. The Minister Concerned, Stuart Robert, said this morning, my bad not realising the sheer scale of the, the decision on Sunday night by the national leaders that literally saw hundreds and hundreds of thousands, maybe a million people unemployed overnight. That's been his response. Uh, the government says it's expanding capacity now. What, what do you say to that? I say to that minister, you are completely out of touch. You're out of touch when you're in charge of Veterans Affairs. You're in charge of the National Disability Insurance Scheme. You're in charge of government services. Um, 
I would never have given you that job in the first place after the mincemeat that you made out of Veterans Affairs when you were sitting there. I find this minister to have very little compassion um, and quite frankly, he should be removed from his duties and let somebody else step in. I think he's absolutely gone. And the sheer arrogance to come out and say what he said this morning, how about, here's a good thing, it's, it's pretty simple, how about you say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That would have been a good start for this morning. Yeah, well, he said that he didn't... He did not anticipate the scale of the job losses given the announcements. Do you... Oh, come on. Do you accept that? Oh, my goodness. No, I do not accept that. Wake up, big boy. Get out with your shoes on and see what's going on out there. My God, where are you people? This is why people don't trust politicians. Wake up. Things are happening and they're happening really fast out there and you better get up with what's going on very, very quickly. Now, in terms of the, the support package, you said that it's not out there fast enough. What do you want to happen now from the government? What sort of extra support? Uh, th th there are a lot of people in limbo, as you said, and they will be for quite a long time without knowing where their futures lie because this situation remains uncertain, doesn't it, for, you know, at least six months? Yeah, I think that uh, those people in those Centrelink lines, we need to try and get payment through to them as quickly as possible. They're really going to feel it and they're going to feel it first and foremost. So, like I said, if we can start getting those payments out, I don't understand what's going to take 28 days. As they're coming through, they should be just ticking them off. Look, if it's going to be a bit of a hit and miss if, if there's some people that have been overpaid or whatever. We can worry about all that later, for goodness sake. But they need money and they need money now. Uh, the other thing is telehealth. Karen, telehealth. I don't know why we're not doing a lot more telehealth. We want a lot less people in these GP clinics. There's no reason that those people with chronic and underlying conditions, if they do not need to see the doctor but need scripts, can't ring up under the circumstances, ring up and get those scripts written out, sent straight to the pharmacy, just to take the load off those GP services. Um, and I haven't heard that the AMA come out and speak enough about this, but they really need to put their foot down on it because right now those GP and the services in these, um, especially in my own backyard, are really starting to feel it. And what we don't want is those with underlying conditions already in chronic um, health issues, actually in those clinics, if other people and they don't know are running around with that virus, we need to eliminate that as quickly as possible. And in terms of that approach, are you, are you comfortable with where things are at at the state level? Are they doing enough? Are, are the restrictions... In, that are in place, are they going far enough at this point? And what's the situation with Tasmanian schools as we speak today? Um, so Tasmanian schools are still uh, are still going about their daily routine today. I can say now, I believe, and I've called it this morning, that we should bring those least holidays forward and we should finish up Thursday afternoon. That'll give the parents, the teachers and anybody else involved in that sector for the next 48 hours to get their head around that and then use maybe that next week getting ready for online services and only having bare minimum staff at those schools. We've got after school care um, and morning uh, before, before school care. There's no reason. This has been done in the past. Uh, certainly when we have um, holidays or a day off where people that get stuck can drop their kids off at those centres, especially those essential services. There's other ways around this. Um, look, we've sort of got some sort of control here in Tasmania at the moment and I think that um, bottom line is I believe the Premier, if he says to go in hard, go in early, now let's go in hard, go in early and pull those schools up and finish off Thursday and go on school holidays early. And, and in terms of the broader operation of the state, you wanted only essential services at this point? Yeah, essential services, obviously. I think um, most people have already shut... A lot of people have shut down here, to be honest with you. They're like ghost towns out there at the moment. Um, most Tasmanians, at least 99.9% .9 of them, um, are playing this game and doing it very, very well. I can tell you now that the turnaround's been really quick. I was a little bit concerned about the slow pace of it late last week, but I'll tell you, it's getting through to them now, mate. It's getting through. Yeah, it sure is. It is a very tough situation. Jackie Lambie, on a, a range of issues this morning, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for that. Thanks very much for having me on.